Today, I seek out the gear that raised me. The gear that I used as a developing young guitar player. It's gonna be a stroll down memory lane and maybe some of you share the same gear that I used when I was first starting out playing guitar. I would say about 13 to 15 is the age range that I am recalling and trying to locate amps, pedals, maybe even a guitar. Why, you ask? Well, it, it should be entertaining. I have this oral vision of what these things sounded like. I recall the sound of a Line 6 spider amp on the insane setting sounding like absolute sonic bliss. This gear is nostalgic. Maybe I'll even end up purchasing something that I used to own. Who knows? Could have gone through the circle of life in the guitar world and made its way back to me. I'm going to be using eBay or Reverb or whatever platform allows me to locate my long lost gear. And I invite you to leave a comment down below your cherished piece of gear that not necessarily got away. I mean, there's a reason we moved on from some of this gear. It maybe wasn't the greatest, but it holds a special place in our hearts. So what is that piece of gear for you? Let me know. Let's get started. All right, the first thing I'm going for is the Line 6 Spider 3. I think it was a Spider 3. Oh, nothing. What about just Spider? Maybe it's not Spider 3. Oh, that's it. Spider 4? Is that it? Let me see. I don't think that's it. I think it was a Spider 3 that I had. Let me check eBay real quick. Line 6. Nope, that's not it either. So Spider, so it wasn't a Spider 3 because I need to see the insane setting. Yeah, the 15 watt one doesn't have the insane setting. So I got to get the the 75 watt, I suppose. Yep. That's the one, 75 watt Spider 2. Okay, now we search. Oh, local pickup only. Oh man. All right, this is the best I can find. I'm gonna offer them, I charge them 50 bucks for shipping. So about a hundred bucks for your Line 6 Spider that you're clearly never gonna use. I will review the offer. I will submit the offer. All right, so that's the amp that I always use. Now the pedal that I used to use all the time, pretty much Boss were the pedals. Let me go through the Boss website and see if any of these jog my memory. Oh, the Dynamic Wah. That is absolutely a pedal I had so much fun with. All right, we're gonna go to Reverb, Boss, Dynamic Wah. I'm gonna try and find a used one, so that way maybe it was once mine. What the heck, $400? Why is this $400? Sellers open to offers. Doesn't say like anybody famous played it. Um, I don't think this person's gonna have much luck selling that for 400 bucks. All right, this one looks pretty good. I am going to make an offer. How about 50 bucks? Whoa, not 501. <laughs> Please. All right, I'm gonna go with a guitar now. There's no way I'm gonna be able to find the brand that I had, because I don't even remember what brand, but I just posted this Throwback Thursday picture that I found of when I was like 14 and I had a nylon string guitar. Yeah, it, doesn't, it just doesn't even have a brand on the headstock, so I couldn't tell even if I tried. Yeah, look at that hair, by the way. Pretty nice, huh? You know, this one looks just like it. Uh, let's see, $135 shipping, F that. How about this one? Washburn, still shipping, $50 shipping, that's a lot more reasonable. Yeah. We are gonna go with this one. Listed two months ago, I'm about to make your day. Let's go ahead and buy it. Music go around in Minnesota. All right, so I got my old amp, my old guitar pedal, an old nylon string. I think the last thing that I can remember influential and essential to my development in enjoying music was a Line 6 pod. Uh, I used that all through high school and I brought it to college and used it. It was my first introduction into recording guitar into my computer. Man, I, I can't thank Line 6 enough for all the innovation they made. Now, I definitely can't remember if I had a pod or a pod. I think I had a pod XT. I remember there was a setting on it called uh, Streets Have No Name, like the U2 sound. And then there was also a Steve Vai kind of sound in there. Really just like an expansion of the insane setting on the spider, but it was a lot more nuanced. There were so many more tones to explore and presets. That was the coolest part about the pod is all the presets that just exposed me to different guitar sounds. This looks like it 
yeah, this was it, I think. It's still going for a couple hundred bucks. It's not not cheap. Local pickup only. Come on, you guys are killing me with the local pickup. How about this one? Comes with the power supply. All right, let's buy it. And $15 shipping. See, that's some reasonable shipping right there. If my offers don't get accepted, then I'll just pay what they're asking. So we won't go through that. The next time you see me, I'm gonna have all this gear and we're gonna test it out. About one week later. All right, everything has started to arrive at my home. We have the dynamic wah. Can't wait to use this bad boy. And I have to show you this pedal. I actually bought it after I stopped filming the first segment uh, because I forgot about it, honestly. Maybe the most important pedal of my guitar development stage because it has a built-in drum looper and it has all this other awesome stuff. And maybe some of you will recognize it, maybe a lot of you won't, but this is an awesome guitar pedal as far as I can remember. The Korg AX100G. Look, it has a volume slash wah pedal. It has different uh, preset selections and effect selections. And this is really kind of like a precursor to the Line 6 Pod XT for me. And again, the most important part that we're gonna get into with this pedal is the drum loops. Oh, I can't wait. I haven't heard those since I was 15. We have here, we've got my old trusty bean, Pod XT, and I thought this was kind of funny. Line 6 adapter, brand new. And then of course we got this bad boy, the nylon string. Um, not the best quality instrument, kind of feels a little bit like it came from Toys R Us, but I think that is pretty much the same kind of feel that my old nylon string had when I was a kid, so. We'll see what I can get out of this thing, and I'm still waiting on the Line 6 Spider amp. It's supposed to be here today, so I should be able to loop that in. Hmm, it's here. Can you help me open this? Thank you. Thank you very much for your assistance, Howard. You've done well in your first unboxing. Check this out. Little pick holder they built into this thing. Oh, I remember those light up lights. Oh, that brings me back. Well, you know where we're going. Oh. Okay, a little bit more uh, grainy than I remember. Unbelievable, insane, I guess I should say, amount of gain. That's definitely still the same. Sounded a little better to my 14-year-old uh, ears, though. I remember another setting, the red insane setting. I believe it, it turned on, like, was it the phaser or the chorus? <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> Is ridiculous it's like some weird wait is the phaser doing that let me see no so insane is just like this baritone sound like this octave down the red insane setting I totally forgot about that but now I instantly remember it's almost like a ring mod I remember the green metal was a, a pretty usable sound Man, 
That's fun. <laughs> oh, I'm probably, that's what I was playing at that age too. I don't know where that came from. Something just possessed me to go to drop D. It's like uh, there's some mojo in this amp. Sweep echo, I, I vaguely remember that sound. <laughs> Not sure what Line 6 was thinking on that one. Chorus flange, who could forget this sound? This is like the Zach Wilde sound. Man, that's awesome. Well, let's move on to the next piece of nostalgic gear, shall we? Hey, that's the old, oh, funky. All right, let's see if I can find any of my old A minor. All right, there's a slight issue. Some of these patches just aren't working. That one works fine. This one just doesn't work. What do you know, you bought something on reverb and it doesn't work. Oh, this is so disappointing. You're tainting my memory of my beloved pedal. Sounds pretty cool. It's so weird how some of them just aren't working. Whatever. Oh, the flanger, come on! Phaser works fine. Yeah, like this is supposed to control, this is supposed to be like an expression pedal. So it's supposed to dial in some of the vibrato. All right, if the drum machine doesn't work, I'm gonna lose my mind. It works, baby. Doesn't really sound like reggae. I'm trying to remember. Oh, <laughs> I remember this beat. This sounds so stupid. Maybe shouldn't have, uh, ah, what the hell. It was fun. Just getting back to my roots. Um, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna use this pedal again, though. Good while it lasted, glad it was in my life, but, um, it's going on the shelf. Let's see, let's see. Oh, EJ Clean! I remember this one. That sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> Why did I ever get rid of this thing? Let's keep going. Oh, I remember this one. Oh, this is a song that I played constantly. All right, I'm not even gonna go past that. That's uh, that's not great sounding. Let's keep going. John Mayer lead. I don't even remember John Mayer being a thing back then. Slow dancing. Kind of disappointing. The Eric Johnson clean one was awesome. I 
I could see how that would be absolutely delightful at 15 years old. That is just a wall of milky goodness. <laughs> oh, this is it. Solo 100. I would add delay to this and I think compressor too just to make it even more squishy oh my that's it you know line six delays I think might be my favorite like that digital just super awesome especially in headphones Dude, that's the sound. No, oh, I got little tinglies all over. All right, this bad boy is one of the first pedals that just really got me excited about guitar pedals. Let's see if I can remember how I liked this one. That sounds so, fr oh, this pedal's awesome, man. I can't believe I haven't owned this one forever. Why did I get rid of this? Have I said that already in this video? I seem to recall using this with distortion too. I Let's hear how that sounds. <laughs> sounds like Neat. All right, finally we come to this. Um, this guitar is having a little trouble staying in tune, to be quite honest, so we're gonna see what I can get out of it. Honestly, I, like I said, I used to strum on nylon strings, playing like... So, I didn't exactly play this thing how you were supposed to, which is sans pick, so... I don't know, maybe I would play something like this now. Hmm, maybe I'll stay around fifth fret and below. <laughs> I remember hearing this song when I was really young and I had no chance to play it but it was always kind of like one of those songs I was like, one day, I'm gonna be able to play that. It was Mediterranean Sundance by Al Demiola. And as you can see, the, the metal or nylon or whatever is on this string is kind of coming apart, so I don't know how long this guitar has left, but 
one of the first songs I ever learned, I don't know who it's by or if it even is a song, it might have just been an exercise, but this is one of the first things I ever played on the guitar. complicated for the first thing. I, I definitely remember playing that though, like when I first picked up an acoustic guitar and I started learning chords and strumming patterns and stuff, I immediately was drawn to finger style stuff and that's translated and kind of brought me where I am today. Pretty much anything I can play with a pick, I can also play with my fingers um, and that's pretty sweet. I think every guitar player should be able to do that. So uh, that concludes the journey down memory lane, my nostalgic guitar gear. What's your most treasured piece of gear or that piece of gear that got away? Maybe it's on eBay. Thanks a lot for watching this video. It was a fun one to make. I'll see you guys next time.